Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 3rd June 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you want to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help you in your trading, you may visit the site www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, let's go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's topics, we'll go through technical analysis of key markets, including oil, gold, India Nifty Index, and few Forex pairs. We'll also look at SPY, QQQ, DIA, We'll also look at IWM starting from this week, that is Russell 2000 ETF. Then we will look at broad market internal analysis and sector and industry analysis through key graphs and ranking table. We may look at some of the trade ideas posted in traders community since our last class and look for potential trades for upcoming week. In this class also, like in previous week, we'll use QVital along with QGlobal and QElite and sector and industry analysis to have a holistic look at stocks. That is looking at them through broad market sector industry fundamental as well as technical analysis. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel and I'll try to answer them as we go along. This was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to five system. Let's start with US oil. We are looking at US oil using weekly chart backdrop template on the left hand side and daily chart hop on template on the right hand side. In the weekly chart, US oil is in downtrend going down with lower high and lower low. And every time it comes to the memory resistance line, it is tilting down from there. A few weeks ago, it displayed a bullish headwind, which was also at watermark support level and went up from there. It couldn't reach the memory resistance line, but tilted down. At the right edge, the backdrop candle color is magenta, that is bearish. It still has some more distance to go down before it hits the next watermark support line. In the daily chart, we can see the same downtrend going from lower high to lower lows. However, it is also wild move area where the price is going from upper boundary to lower boundary and then from lower boundary to upper boundary. This is still in downtrend because of lower high and lower low, but it is not reversing from value area that is the middle of the two boundary lines. Under those circumstances, it is difficult to catch the trade using go with flow, short signal. However, it is possible if one is alert to catch the trade at the right time. For example, when US oil came to the upper boundary line, then it displayed a pair release signal. However, if we waited for the end of that day, then price declined substantially and it will be a bit risky to enter a swing short trade at that point 
because the entry price will be around this level and the stop will be somewhere above the recent high. So the risk distance, the distance between entry and the stock price will be quite high. However, an alert trader could have anticipated a magenta bearish flow candle color on this day and used real time fine tune chart to take the short soon after market open at around this price level using real time fine tune chart. By doing that, the stop loss will be narrow and it would have generated substantial profit on the same day. At the right edge of the chart, the candle flow color is red. So it is bearish, however, the candle shape is indecisive with both upper tail and lower tail. It is already quite far from the recent high. So there is no short entry opportunity at this point for swing trade. And because the traffic light candle color is red, we will not enter any long trade as well. The next trade opportunity may come if price comes to this watermark support level and bounces up from there, giving us a potential box sideways long trade opportunity. Let us look at gold. In the weekly chart, gold has higher lows and higher highs. So it is in uptrend. The last swing started after this bullish shaped candle. Since then, price is going up for three successive weeks. At the right edge, price is right at the memory resistance line. The backdrop candle color in weekly chart is bullish. The shape of the candle in weekly chart is also bullish. In the daily chart, we see price has not reached the memory resistance yet. It is going up strongly also with wild moves from upper boundary to lower boundary and now lower boundary to upper boundary. At the right edge of the chart, the traffic light flow candle color is green. It is already above upper boundary. It is overstretched or overbought as we can see from the green stretch dot. So we will not be entering any long trade right now. And because it is bullish, we will not be taking any swing short trade as well. The next trade opportunity may come if price comes to the memory resistance line and tilts down from there. If it tilts down from the memory line, then it may give us a bounce short trade opportunity. And if it goes to the watermark resistance and tilts down from there, it may give us a box short trade opportunity. If both of that happens on the same day, that is it goes down from both memory and the watermark resistance line, then it may give us a combined box and bounce short trade opportunity. Let us look at Nifty index, Nifty futures. This is Nifty futures, the broad market index futures in India. We see in the weekly chart, it is very much overstretched to the upside as shown by the bullish stretch signals. It is going up strongly since the last time bullish headwind appeared in the weekly backdrop template. In the daily chart also it is going up but we can see that it is going up using narrow range days and small small candles not very strongly bullish candles. The last strongly bullish candles came several days ago and since then for last four days it is going up but very slowly. At the right edge the candle flow color is neutral. It is very close to the upper boundary. It is in clear uptrend. So we are not going to take any long swing trade at this point and because it is in uptrend and there is no short setup we are not going to take any short trade as well let's look at australia index a x j o for australia index in the weekly chart it is in uptrend over last several weeks it came down with backdrop candle color magenta that is bearish 
last week it closed with a bullish shape candle though the backdrop color is still bearish in the daily chart we see that on tuesday on this day in daily chart it displayed a bullish headwind and since then price went up so a trader looking at the bullish headwind and also the fake downside breakout when price came below this watermark support level and went back up could have entered a long swing trade on this bullish headwind day it actually came below two watermark support levels at this level and at this level and then went back up with a bullish headwind and also a bullish shape candle so an alert trader could easily enter a long swing trade on that day and book some profit as price came to value area partial position could still be held with a stop loss now closer to the price to make sure that the entire trade is risk free from now onward at the right edge price is already in value area so it will not be entering any long trade right now there is no standard go with flow trade setup our next trade opportunity could come if price tilts down and then goes up from there giving us a proper go with flow long trade setup or it could tilt down right from here giving us a go with flow short trade setup the other possibility is for price to go up to the memory resistance line and then till down from there possibly giving us a bounced short trade opportunity let's look at some forex pairs let's start with sing dollar sing dollar came down after displaying this bear daily signal which was a fake upside breakout price trying to go above the watermark resistance level and coming down below that so a short trade could be entered on this day partial profit could be booked when price hit the white very slow direction line and partial position could be held until it came to the lower boundary line now sing dollar is moving sideways sideways moving areas are not trade enter areas for superior profit way so we will be exiting the entire position at this point in the weekly chart we see that price is coming down last week closed with a bearish shape candle with upper tail as well as bearish backdrop color magenta of our price is very close to the support memory line in weekly we see the same support memory line in daily chart we will not be entering any short trade let's look at aussie dollar in australian dollar the last trade opportunity could have come on this bear daily signal and then another trade opportunity came on this candle which was a possible go with flow short trade stop would be just above the memory line or above this agenda candle at that point entry price will be at the close of the candle risk amount will be this distance and when price came down the next day was very close to the memory support line more than risk distance was covered and profit will be booked the partial position was held with break even stop then next day as price went up the stop will be hit and the overall trade will still be profitable this is yet another example that when price comes to memory support or resistance lines we are careful to book profit and not to expect that price will continue to go below the memory support line at the right edge of the chart the candle flow color is bullish the candle shape is bullish very much it displayed a bull release signal it came very close to the memory support and went up from there there was no standard trade setup 
for swing trade and alert trader could have entered a long day trade on this candle keeping in mind the possible reversal from the memory support line at the right edge it is inside triangle pattern bounded by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom so we will not be taking any trade right now for swing trade if price comes to the memory resistance and steals down from there it may give us a potential short day trade opportunity for swing trade we'll prefer to wait until price comes out of this triangle pattern let's look at euro usd euro usd is very bullish in the weekly chart it is going up strongly last time it hit the memory support line it displayed a cyan backdrop color bullish color and since then price is going up at the right edge price is at the upper boundary in weekly chart overbought in the daily chart also it is clearly going up with higher high and higher lows and in this case it is in strong uptrend because price is going up from the value area it is not displaying wild move that is it is not coming down to the lower boundary instead reversing from the value area so that is showing strong uptrend at the right edge of the chart the flow candle color is bullish cyan the candle shape is also very bullish price is already close to the upper boundary so in our conservative way we will not be entering any long swing trade at this point and because it is in clear uptrend we are not going to enter any short trade as well next trade opportunity may come if price comes to this memory resistance line which is there both in weekly chart and daily chart and tilts down from there once again an alert trader may keep this price level in mind and may enter a short day trade using q fine tune chart book partial profit quickly and may hold the remaining position for longer time let us now look at broad market sector and industry analysis every week we look at broad market using nasdaq composite index weekly chart on the left hand side and nyc composite index also weekly chart on the right hand side we look at the indices themselves that is on the upper panel and three pairs of internals the new high low advanced decline and up down volume this week nyc went up it made a new high price is over bought in the weekly chart nasdaq continues to outperform nyc it went up also it's also over bought in the weekly chart over this longer period of time we can say nyc is moving somewhat sideways however nasdaq is clearly moving strongly upward in terms of the internals we see new high low in both nasdaq and nyse made robust new highs it didn't quite reach the past highest point but the highs were significantly higher than the recent values that we saw for many months that shows the strength of the new highs however the other indicators are not again showing the same bullishness you can see that the other internals went up but didn't make as much high values as the new high lows made in fact the nyac up down volume declined and turned negative that is very surprising considering the strong up move in both nyse 
and NASDAQ. This pattern is continuing for many months now. The internals are not showing the strength that is shown by the indices. However, we should still acknowledge that in this week, the new high lows made very significant highs and also few other indicators like the advanced decline in NASDAQ made a relatively higher high. We we'll continue to say that the internals are not in sync with the indices and the indices themselves remain bullish. This is to be used for more longer term investment because it is using broad market indices and also using weekly chart. This is not to be used for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Because the market is continuing to go up, it is probably not the time to start shorting yet for both NYSE and NASDAQ. For sector performance every week, we look at 10 broad market sectors. We look at them through three periods, last one week, one week before that. Last week, data shown by the red bar, the week before that shown by the blue bar, and two weeks before that shown by the green bar. Together, they constitute four week or one month of performance. In this week, we see that except energy and financial, all the sectors gained. Energy was lagging for a while, so that bearishness continues. This is energy showing significant drop for two successive weeks. The bars coming to the left hand side of the zero point shows that the performance was negative and we can see for a week before that and for the current week, energy had significant drops. Financial, on the other hand, it was positive in the previous week, but this week declined while most other sectors went up. It declined, but not as much as energy. And the decline in the financial sector was reflected in the decline of several industries belonging to financial sector. Telecom is a big winner this week. If you remember, we started looking for telecom bottom fishing opportunities in last week's market roundup. I think we looked at AT&T, Verizon, etc. If we kept that in mind, we probably had some profitable trades in this week as telecom made a significant gain from last week's loss. Basic materials gain. Again, we started looking for bottom fishing opportunities in this sector in last week's market roundup. Basic materials also had a significant gain. It had gained last week as well. Moving to industries, we are looking at last five days, best performing industries by percentage. Gambling was best rank improver last week. We had discussed in last week's market roundup and this week it is one of the best performers. If you are studying these graphs regularly, you will notice that sometimes, not always, but sometimes when an industry is best rank improver in a particular way, in subsequent weeks, it ends up being one of the best performers. That happened with gambling this time, where it was one of the best rank improver in previous week and this week it became one of the best performer. Renewable energy equipment did well. Those who are attending this class regularly, they know that we are able to catch the bottom of this because we were seeing it lagging for many, many months and then it started improving in our industry ranking table. And we had looked at several stocks looked at their fundamentals and identified the strongest in them. And we could catch the bottom or almost the very bottom of some of the stocks in this industry group. It is continuing to do well. 
in spite of us coming out of the paris climate deal this industry group for the week gained significantly in this week three of the auto related industries gained automobiles automobile and parts and auto parts some of the automobile industries were among best rank improver last week so if we had watched that then we could be alert and go long in some of the auto companies and profit from that in the current week incidentally this week several auto manufacturers posted their sales result auto sales data that might have resulted in the auto industries going up but we already were aware of that from their rank improvement in the previous week so we could be alert before the market news appeared and take long by the time the market news came probably we could have booked some profit in this way we are usually ahead of the news if we look at last 5 days was performing industries we see that non ferrous metal was among biggest rank decliners last week and this week it is one of the worst performers so again if we were tracking the rank decliners previous week we could have probably taken some short trade in this industry group and make profit from that six industry groups covering coal and energy related industries declined they were among worst decliners last week as well we saw from sector graph also that energy continued its downturn from previous week that is reflected in this industry graph as well and we saw finance sector decline and two industry related to that bank and investment services declined in this week if we look at the biggest rank improvers this week then we see that this is the third week that distillers and vintners are flip flopping this week it gained in rank previous week it declined and the week before that it had improved so we discussed this industry in detail last week and we were tracking stz for potential pullback from top we may continue to keep an eye on stz let us move to that chart and have a look we can see that in the weekly chart stz is at very top it is already overbought beyond upper boundary but for 3 weeks now it is not able to go up it is moving somewhat sideways last week ended with a bullish shape candle but with yellow backdrop color that is neutral in the daily chart we saw that there was a bearish headwind previous week price came down then it went back up right up to the high of the bearish headwind day price is overbought it had a bearish shape candle on friday however there is no bear release signal if next week bear release signal comes from this watermark resistance level that was created by bearish headwind signal then it may give us a short opportunity at the very top with very low risk this way by tracking a stock for potential trade opportunities over several days or even several weeks we are able to catch the trade before others and a very alert trader might even try to catch the short trade using fine tune real time chart at prices already close to upper boundary we will not be entering any long trade now and we will be looking to enter a short trade if it tilts down from there continuing with the industries with biggest rank improvement we see that two telecom industries gained in rank fixed line telecom and telecom we had already looked at at&t and verizon in last week's market round up both of them gave go with flow long opportunity this week so we were already prepared for that and some traders could have taken 
go with flow long trend. Out of these two, Verizon has already hit the profit target and AT&T has profit but has not hit the profit target yet. Let's look at these two stocks. This is Verizon. It displayed a bullish headwind at the bottom of the chart in Delhi. It would be on this weekly candle. That weekly candle closed with a long tail. Shape was bullish. That, but on this day, that is in the current week, it formed a higher high, higher high and higher low. Thereby giving us a go with flow long trade opportunity. By the end of the day, if somebody entered the trade, then probably the risk was slightly more than the potential reward. So an alert trader keeping an eye on Verizon based on what we discussed in weekly market roundup one week ago could have entered the long trade using real time fine tune chart in this candle, thereby booking some profit as day trade in the same day holding the remaining position and as it hit the upper boundary exiting more position on Friday. If we look at AT&T, AT&T also displayed the bullish headwind and on this candle it had also formed a fake downside breakout going below the watermark support level and coming above it. It also displayed a bull release on the same day. So an alert trader could have entered a long trade right on this day. And price was also bouncing up from memory support line at that time, probably in this candle. If somebody missed that long opportunity, the go with flow long opportunity came this way. Long trade could be entered at the close of the day. Stop loss would be below recent low. This will be the risk distance. Profit target will be at the declining slow direction line, the yellow line or the upper boundary level. So it hasn't hit that yet. We are still in the trade. It is making profit so far. Last week we had discussed that in terms of at a glance chart, looking at both weekly and daily, AT&T was stronger because it was bouncing up from memory support line and in longer weekly chart, it was forming higher low. So using that one could have entered the trade easily either as a fake downside breakout bullish headwind trade or a go with flow long trade. Let's continue with rank improvers. In this week, we see biotech gained in rank. Biotech Pharma, these are the industry groups that are lagging for many months now and it had a rank improvement in this week. So we have to see whether it will turn around now. Just like we did in case of telecom and also for basic material, we may be ahead of the market, other participants, and look for fundamentally strong stocks using QVITAR for potential long-term investing, which could be also taken as swing trade. So we know several strong companies already. These are well-known companies, Valiant, VRX, Jilead, Amgen, Celgene, Alexian, Regeneration, etc. We may now spend some time to see which one of these are most strong fundamentally. Now, if you are already tracking these stocks, you may be spending time to do fundamental analysis also. So let me ask and you may type your answer in the Q&A panel, which one of these do you think is fundamentally most strong? We would like to keep that information in mind. This group's rank has improved, so there is a possibility they will be better performer in coming weeks. And for long-term investment, we would like to use the Q technical chart to enter it at the bottom, but we would also like to take long position in the fundamentally stronger company. So if you know, you may type that now, but let us also use QVITAL and we will be able to decide that in less than five minutes.
in q phi tar we have multiple ways of finding the strongest stocks if we know the symbols we can type them manually and then click on this button to calculate the vital statistics of all the companies it does all the hard work and displays the result in multiple tabs including basic information price performance fundamental information and finally scoring in this case we know some of the companies so we could just type them once we have typed the symbol it goes to the metastock zeni which is thomson reuters icon platform looks for stocks belonging to the same industry and it picks up the 25 stocks belonging to that group instead of looking for same industry we could look for same sector in that case it will try to find stocks belonging to same sector as jailit or if we wanted we could compare jailit with stocks in the same country in this case america we could also do a mixing that is we could get the peers of jailit like we have done in this case and let us switch to same industry so it has got all of jailit's peers belonging to same industry and we could also type some of the stocks so in this case I see we have already typed Alexian. We also see some of the basic information of the key company that we type Jaili. So the name is of course Jaili. The next EPS date in, is in July. So it is some distance away. We can safely take a long term trade as well as a swing trade. stock price is 64.62 so it is not a penny stock of course it has significant volume per day 9000 9 million shares traded per day and we are seeing that last five days of our last 30 days there is a slight decline in volume but not much so it is trading well in recent period last five days to last 30 days it has earnings and it has good dividend as well. That is about the company that we type here, Jailid. But we would like to compare Jailid with all its peers. Remember, looking at stocks that do not belong to same industry may not give us the proper picture. To see whether a company is fundamentally strong, we need to compare it with its industry peers. So we have done that here. We have selected only industry peers. We'll now click on this button. This little boy calculating all the vital statistics. Let me delete election for now. It will show here that it is now going to icon or metastock zenith and retrieving all the data and it has finished calculation. QVital is not ready yet for release. It will be released soon in the store. Uh, it is not released yet. It is internally going through some beta testing. I'm using it in trading every week and it is doing very well. We are demonstrating that right now. Now it has done all the hard work. If we go to basic info, we see that all the companies that it brought belong to the same industry group, biotech and medical research they belong to healthcare sector and we can see that one of them belongs to switzerland all the others belong to the united states the one belonging to switzerland is atln if we didn't want to look at it maybe because we don't have a brokerage account to trade in switzerland we have provided filter for country so we could just take the swiss company out now if we look at the us based biotech and medical research companies we see that jailid has very large market cap mgen and selgin also has very large market cap 
the top three companies in the list and even the lower ones have significant market cap this is in million dollar all of them have more than 1 billion market cap so all these are very large companies closing price is also good none of them are penny stock all of them are much higher than one dollar good average volume in all of them this one is 141,000 per day that is xlrm it may be little less this is also less beijing so what we have done we have colored all the cells with green when that is desirable so market cap high is more desirable for us because those are more liquid of course we can see in this case the lowest market cap is also very big we can safely take trade in any of them for closing price we know that lower priced stocks move faster so we have colored the lower price stocks are green whereas this company regeneration is already 466 dollar it will take a significant capital to buy 100 shares and also probably it will move slower than a lower price stock like this juno therapeutics for example which has significant volume as well we are looking for higher volume so that it has better bid ask spread jailid is the best one but companies like juno also has enough volume around 500,000. that is good enough for us to take swing trade as well as long term investment in terms of short interest we know that if a company already has high short interest and it starts to go up it will move up faster so we have colored the sales accordingly so the companies which have high short interest juno for example again if it starts going up then people who have short position will cover that will fuel the up rally further and it will go up faster whereas companies like jaili mgen selgene all these large companies regeneration valiant inside they have very little short interest so if it goes up it may still go up but short covering will not further fuel that up move so we can see just looking at basic information juno looks to be a potentially good candidate just based on these few parameters it has a lower price it will move faster in a volume and it has significant short interest intercept pharmaceutical on the other hand has less volume quite less than 500,000 share per day we may still take a long position but we will be more careful about that in terms of dividend we see that some of the largest companies are paying dividend the others are not paying dividend if we are trying to catch it at the very bottom this may not be so much of a dividend play it will be more taking a long position keeping in mind the potential gain from the stock move and we can also see the companies are making money or not some of them are losing money jcpt juno is also losing money but that is fine it is not uncommon that a stock which is at very low price at pendulum low is losing money that's why probably it is at pendulum low if the fundamental is strong and the technical is also aligned we may still take a long position and profit from that this shows some basic information now we go to price performance this tab shows some very useful information again it shows from last one year over 11 month 10 month right up to one day what is the percentage change in the stock if we focus over the monthly period then we can immediately see that the biggest gainer over one year is tsro row 12 row 12 so tsro it is tasero it's also a well-known biotech company not as large as jailid etc but it's a well-known company tasero and we see that ALNY 
about seven months ago. From there, it was a strong performer. This is a strong performer as well, CLVS. But then it might have declined. Some of the stocks surely would have declined because we know that this industry and the sector was lagging for a long time. And this is again comparison among the peers, not in absolute term. If we are to look at the absolute price performance of the stock, then we will use Q chart for that. This table is for comparing the performance across many months of a stock relative to its peers. And relative to its peers, what we are looking for is stocks which were red colored in the earlier period and turning yellow and green. If we are looking for bottom catching opportunity. So this will be an opportunity Juno again, where it was red earlier over 12 month period and over monthly time frame, it is starting to turn yellowish, greenish. Rare is still red, but improving, changing color from red to yellowish. And then we have more finer detail change over last 10 days, five days, two days, even one day. And we see that Juno is continuing to do well. I haven't looked at the chart. We may look at the chart. Finally, we can make money only if the stock price moves up for a long position. So we will make our final decision always based on Q charts. But this helps us identify opportunities ahead of the price move. So we we'll look at some of these stocks through Q charts as well. But let us continue with the rest of the information. We are looking at in column C how much percentage above 52 week low it is. So if it is not very much above, then we know that it has a higher chance of going up if the industry and sector goes up. Again, the green colors are acceptable, better. So we see this is still green, but already 49% above 52 week low for Juno and CLVS is already very high above 52 week low and almost 400% above. So probably we don't have a bottom catching opportunity in CLVS right now. Whereas we see Jilead, Mgen, Selgin, very large companies, regeneration. They are at, relatively speaking, closer to 52 week low. We use the first column for potential short opportunities. It shows the percentage below 52 week high. So we see that regeneration is very close to 52 week high. Vertex also very close to 52 week high. So if a stock is very close to 52 week high, we might have lost the best opportunity to, to catch it at the bottom, but we might look at some of them anyway. From looking at it, we see Juno may be a potential candidate. Yailit can also be a potential candidate because it is declining for a long time and starting to show yellow color in terms of percentage change. All these three actually, Jailid, MGM, Selgin, large companies, they were red and starting to turn yellow. In terms of fundamental information, we look at some key parameters. The first three columns look at extensiveness of the company. For financial companies, we may look at PBR. For non-financials like pharma companies, biotech companies, we need to look at only EV, EBITDA and PE that show if the company is expensive or not, again, relative to PRs. So again, green is good. So we see relative to its earnings, etc. cetera, Jilid MGen is very attractively priced. So are, I think, UTHR, United Therapeutics and BIVV. What is BIVV? That is row 14, bioverative, bioverative also attractive. So we see Jilet, Mgen, Beef and United Therapeutics attractively priced. Whereas Selgene regeneration are not attractively priced anymore. We look at EPS data to see whether the company is making money or not. But as I mentioned, if a company has fallen down a lot, we are looking to catch the bottom. It is expected that there will be some earnings disappointment along the line. So that is okay. In terms of other fundamentals, we look at dividend. For bottom catching, we may not consider this to be dividend plays. So it is okay to have low or no dividend. 
for short interest we are looking for companies which are having higher short interest so if they go up short covering will fuel the rally for that we see jcpt is good for that juno is also good for that kite is also good for that whereas these companies the largest companies jaili damjin etc don't have high short interest then we look at longer term performance of the company based on fundamental in price performance we saw longer term performance shorter term performance in terms of price move and now we are looking at longer term performance in terms of fundamental so eps growth and revenue growth over 5 and 3 years again because we are looking for bottom catching opportunity it is expected that some of the criteria will not be the best But relatively speaking we can see that jailid is very strong one of the strongest all you need to do is just look at the rows with maximum green color or green or yellow color so jailid is clearly the strongest for medium term performance we look at operating margin roe roa again instantly we can see that jailid is one of the strongest so is selgin so is mgen so is this company ATLN, ATLN row eight. If we don't know the stock, we can always go back to basic information. Row eight. It is Actelian. Actelian is also very good. So we can see that medium term wise, there are several companies that are very strong. All these companies, whereas these companies are not so strong. That includes. You know also, not you know that includes CLVS, Rare, Portala, PTLA. You know is in the middle. It is yellow color. Then we look at short term performance, quick ratio, ability to service date. Again, these are relatively speaking. So red doesn't mean the company doesn't have ability to service date. It's just a relative measure among the companies. I think GILD, MGN, Selgin, they have no issue paying up their debt. They are very large companies, and they have very good operating margin. So I don't think that's an issue. The red color just shows, relatively speaking, they are not the strongest. These are actually the strongest, relatively speaking. These are PT, PGN, etc. Current ratio and debt equity ratio again related to debt servicing. Again, we see that the largest companies are not the best in these parameters, whereas some of the smaller companies are best in terms of debt servicing. But that's okay. It's just providing some fundamental information. What we are looking for here is whether the company has ability to pay debt. These companies we know they are very large. They have good operating margin. Relatively speaking, they are not best, but they are still okay. We are looking for companies with bigger alpha. So we can see this is very good. That is Tesero, PSRO. In terms of alpha, that is performance beyond the stock market. This is also quite good. SRPT. The biggest companies don't have the best alpha. For beta, we are looking for companies which has high beta, so it will move faster. This is similar to use of our short interest value. High short interest means it may move faster once it starts to go up. So we can see ALNY has very large beta. Also this company, blue. This company also, FJEM. What about Juno? Juno also has large beta, 1.87. Now we have looked at long term medium term short term both in terms of price performance as well as in terms of fundamental those are all useful information finally we may just look at the scoring or we could even after getting all the data after clicking on this cute little guy we could directly come to scoring and look at the first six columns to see which company is fundamentally strongest here we have two different categories of comparing the stocks the first three columns 
ranks all these companies across the whole market. That's why these ranks are in a scale of 1 to 100. We don't need to look at the number so much. If it is green color, then it is strong. It is comparing across broader market. Whereas the next three columns, they are calculating the rank relative to only its peers. So the number of these three columns goes from one to maximum, which is the number of stocks in this case. Again, in this case also, we don't need to so much look at the number, we just look at the color. Number is there to identify if we want to get the strongest, then we can see that United Therapeutics has the biggest PBR value. But remember for non-financial companies, we are not going to look at PBR. So we are going to look at only EV, EBITDA and PE. And if we look at that, again, United Therapeutics is the strongest. And Jailid is also one of the strongest. These two are the strongest. If we look at only at the peers. And if we look at the broader market, then we see that MGN is strong. Jailid is also very strong. United Therapeutics is also very strong. So if we with the PE and PBR ranking is clear, they are ranking the companies that we are seeing here and coloring them with green when they are the strongest. Whereas the first three columns are more complicated. Earnings reliability calculates whether the earnings data that we are getting from quarter to quarter, year to year, is it reliable? Meaning, will it be repeating itself? How we can know that? If we see that gap and non-gap earnings are similar, then we know that it is more representative of what is really going on. Similarly, if the earnings is coming from operating margin and not from one-time transactions, then it is more reliable. So the first column calculates that is earnings data reliable and we can see MGN is reliable, Celgene is very reliable, Vertex, ALN is reliable, United Therapeutics is also very reliable. We just need to look at the color coding. Some of them are not so reliable. Doesn't mean that we cannot make money by using technical Q charts, but if we are going for a longer term investment, then it is preferred. It's not the only way, but it is preferred that we take a position in the companies where the earnings are reliable. And then we look at also relative value and internal value. Let's start with internal value first. It calculates discounted cash flow of all possible future earnings, dividends, etc. based on projections. And then calculates a ratio relative to current price and see that if we discount cash flow all the future earnings dividend etc then compared to current price is it attractive or not so that is internal value of the stock and we see in terms of that jailid is the strongest what is relative value it calculates multiple valuation ratios combine it into a consolidated value and compares it with the current stock price to evaluate which of the stocks are strongest and which ones are weakest. In a scale of 1 to 100, 100 being the strongest and 1 being the weakest. If we look at relative value, we again see that Jailid, Amgen, Selgene, Regeneration, BIVV and United Therapeutics are the strongest. We were discussing about the pharma biotech companies and we were looking to find the strongest fundamental companies and see if there is a trade opportunity. We looked at the five columns here and we could immediately identify by looking just at the green coloring that Jailid, Amgen, Celgene, United Therapeutics, these are the strongest. And because on other criteria, Juno was looking good, we might look at Juno as well. Let me write it down and I will open them one by one in our at a glance chart. Let's start looking at them. Let's start with Jailid. In the weekly chart, Jailid is 
going in downtrend this week it closed with a bullish backdrop it also closed just above the watermark support line creating a false downside breakout at the right edge we don't have any trade opportunity we may look for jaili to break these memory resistance lines till down and go up giving us a go with flow long trade opportunity let's look at our next stock mgen mgen also declined but as we can see from the weekly chart it didn't decline as much as jaili in terms of weekly chart it is actually having higher lows at the right edge it has a weekly backdrop color neutral a bullish shape candle in the daily chart we see that there was a big gap down drop and then price continued to move down at the right edge of the chart it somewhat stabilized and going up it is inside triangle pattern bounded by resistance memory and support memory so we may wait for price to break above the memory resistance then till down and go up giving us a proper go with flow long trade opportunity let's look at our next stock selgin selgin we can see is stronger than mgen and stronger than jailit weekly chart it didn't drop much at all at the right edge of the chart it has a bullish shape candle and a bull release signal the backdrop color itself is yellow that is neutral in the daily chart we see that there was a bullish headwind signal on thursday which also displayed a bull release signal it went up from a double bottom so an alert trader looking at its strong fundamental and keeping an eye on the industry that was improving in rank could have entered a low risk long on thursday itself on friday it went up if we could enter on the bullish headwind signal that was okay now it is already a bit high so we will not be entering any long trade now we may wait for price to come to the yellow line probably till down little bit from there and go up again giving us a proper go with flow long signal let's look at united therapeutics united therapeutics in weekly chart came to the watermark support level precisely bounced up from there in this earnings week earnings was better than previous quarter that's why it is colored in green it was positive that week had a very bullish shape candle as well since then price was going sideways this week ended with a very bullish shape candle and also bullish backdrop color it also broke above the sideways narrow ranges high price in the daily chart we can see that it moved sideways for many days in a narrow range in last couple of days it broke out of that it is already a bit high for a swing trader it is also near upper boundary near the declining yellow and declining white direction lines so we may wait for price to come down little bit and tilt up from there giving us a proper go with flow long trade opportunity so we see that for all these for very strong fundamental companies mgen selgin jailid and united therapeutics they had declined significantly as the industry declined but now starting to show signs of going up so we may track them on the technical chart and look for potential long term investment as well as swing trade buy positions the last company we wanted to look at is juno it didn't have one of the best fundamentals but in terms of pricing performance etc it was looking attractive in terms of beta in terms of short interest it was looking attractive as well 
we see that in weekly it dropped a lot. However, since December 2016, it is starting to slowly go up. It has already gone up from around 16, 17 price point to 26 price. It is moving in narrow sideways range for several weeks now. Last week closed with bullish backdrop color and very bullish shape candle as well in weekly chart. In the daily chart, we see that price is moving in zigzag up down fashion. So these are not safe areas for entering a trade right now. At the right edge, price is already at the high of the sidewise range. If price came down to the memory support line, an alert trader could take a long trade right at that point and hold on to the trade if it continues to go up from there. Overall, looking at the weekly chart, we see that it is starting to go up for several months. There is still significant short interest so there is a potential for juno to go up this is not the best stock fundamentally speaking as we saw from q vital but technically it may give us a good trade opportunity for long-term investment we will prefer to have the other four stocks mgen selgene jilid united therapeutics all of which are also showing signs of potential move up let us go back to our industry rank improvers from where we came for the pharma stock analysis so we started looking at multiple companies and we concluded that jilid mgen some of them can give us potential long-term trade opportunities let's look at the biggest rank decliners for this week we see three transportation related industries were among best performers last week, but now they are biggest rank decliners. This includes railroad, airlines, and industrial transportation. If you look at some of the railroads companies, you will see that they are at very high price. So we are not going to enter a long-term investment there. For short-term trading, we may look for a long opportunity. However, we could also look for longer-term short opportunity in some of the railroads, airline stocks, etc. Tobacco, internet, and full-line insurance were among best performers last week, and they declined in rank this week. So we may look for potential short in these industry groups. Defense had been a strong performer for a while as seen from superior profit industry ranking this week the rank declined so we may look for potential short as we saw sometimes the rank decline precedes worse performance so if defense company starts to go down from almost the very top that may give us very profitable short opportunities in this industry Let's now move to our industry rank and heat map table. From this week, we have started analyzing and calculating the ranking and heat map for last 12 months. From this, instantly we can see that utilities was not performing well until about seven months ago, and then it has started gaining non-cyclical consumer goods also did the same way technology is strong for a long time but it declined somewhat in the current month period so we may look for some short opportunity probably in the technology sector we can see telecom is very weak though on a weekly basis it gained over last week on a monthly basis it is still very weak energy is also very weak Financials used to be strong earlier, but it is a poor performer for several months now. For industry analysis also, we have started looking at 12 monthly periods now, and we can see 
renewable energy equipment was very poor performer earlier but it has started doing very well last two months it is ranking one and in this immediate current week also we saw that it is ranking very high toys is also doing very well in recent period if we look at biotech and pharma we can see that biotech is weak for a long period of time in the current month also it is ranking poorly however we saw from the weekly graph analysis that it is showing signs of going up and these are the times when we may start looking for bottom catching opportunities you may look at this industry ranking table to find additional trade opportunities this is how we use the industry sector analysis using the superior profit ranking and heat map table we use fundamental analysis using q vital and technical analysis using q trading system all done in a visual easy to use and unambiguous manner to decide both for swing trading as well as for long-term investment that was all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next week's market roundup have a great weekend and trade profitably